Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a police officer on the front lines? It started like any other day for Officer Faircloth until he received a frantic call from a distressed mother who reported an unresponsive baby. Without hesitation, Officer Faircloth rushed to the scene. Luckily, Officer Faircloth had received extensive first aid training, preparing him for such moments. He wasted no time and started performing life-saving efforts on the unresponsive child. Officer Faircloth's quick response was crucial. In situations like these, every second counts. Officer Faircloth's heroic efforts successfully revived the baby, but he didn't stop there. He stayed by their side, offering reassurance and support until the paramedics arrived to take over. The mother can never thank Officer Faircloth enough for what he did. He saved the baby's life. Thursday morning and the perfect day for a little adventure. That's exactly what these three kids thought when they decided to explore the Sam Houston National Forest. Little did they know, their adventure would take an unexpected turn. He's good. Kids, I'm the police. Are y'all ready to get out of the woods? Come on, on buddy. Let's get out of here. You got chase markers in you? After a few tense hours of searching, Sergeant Smith's perseverance paid off. He stumbled upon the kids in the midst of the dense forest. The kids looked scared, and all they wanted was to go back home. When Sheriff Smith found them, it felt like we were saved by a superhero. Yep, just follow that little that little opening. Let's pick up the jacket, the jacket, buddy. Don't get too far ahead, okay? I don't want to lose you again. With unwavering determination and years of experience, Sergeant Smith led the kids out of the forest back to the worried arms of their families. Can you imagine the overwhelming joy and relief those parents must have felt? On February 18th, the Mesa Police Department responded swiftly to a distress call reporting an apartment fire. The body camera footage released by the police shows intense moments during the rescue operation. Give it to me! Get it away! Give it to me! Give it to me! Go, 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 go! The officer spotted the children trapped on the second floor, looking desperate and scared. He knew he couldn't wait for backup. Without hesitation, a good Samaritan sprinted towards the smoky room where two toddlers were left. With an agile leap, he reached one of the kids, ensuring her safety amidst the tremor of fear. Give me the baby. It's okay. It's okay. But his acts of heroism did not end there. Let us not forget that two children were still trapped in this ordeal. The officer swiftly found the second child and performed another daring rescue. Can you believe the dedication and selflessness? The Good Samaritan and the officer put their lives on the line to save those innocent children. Get ready to witness a truly amazing rescue mission that reminds us of our incredible emergency responders' true strength and compassion. Here you go. Got it, got it. Here, pass her up, pass her up. Pass her up. Here, right here, right here. Go, 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 go. A horrifying car crash occurred near a waterway. As news spread about the accident, emergency responders quickly rushed to the scene, ready to save lives. As they approached the car, one of the responders noticed something remarkable. He could see a faint movement inside the vehicle. Come on, baby. She's definitely hypothermic. She's freezing. With great care and expertise, the responders attempted to flip the car over, hoping to reach the trapped person. But as they maneuvered, they discovered something that left them in awe. It wasn't an adult, but a sweet and innocent baby named Lily. Their synchronized efforts prioritized her safety above all else, ensuring that she remained calm and stable throughout the entire rescue operation. A typical day, a busy mom, and an honest mistake. We witness a terrifying situation where keys are locked inside a car, and a precious little life is at risk. Get the FD. Get the FD, come. Just for... The mum did exactly what we should all do in situations like that. She called the Euclid police for help. Thanks to their quick response, the team arrived promptly and sprang into action, focused on rescuing the infant from the potentially life-threatening situation. 
Hey, Jason. Wait, wait, These brave officers demonstrated their commitment to protecting and serving their community by going above and beyond the call of duty. They unlocked the vehicle and ensured the baby's safety and well-being. April 15th, Kalamazoo Public Safety received a distress call from a home on Hutchinson Street. Little did they know, this routine call would soon become a life-or-death situation. Hang in there. Hang in there. Up on their Someone needs to get on his legs and yank his ass all the way out. Yep. You guys ready? On, on three. One, two, three, go. The man, who was 50 years old, had been working underneath the van when it suddenly fell off the jack, pinning him helplessly underneath. As the man went into cardiac arrest, the situation emphasized the critical significance of time. Without wasting a single second, the brave police officers sprang into action. Determined to save this man's life, they lifted the heavy vehicle off the man, creating just enough space for him to breathe. Quick assessment, yep. On fire. Patient is no longer under the vehicle. Clear patient no longer under the vehicle, 1954. Yeah, it's agonal, so we're going to go for it. The weight of the van had caused the man to lose consciousness, but these heroes weren't going to give up. Even though they were police officers, their training had prepared them for moments like these. They immediately started administering CPR to the man. Their skills kicked into high gear as they tirelessly worked to revive him. Buckle up and get ready for a roller coaster of emotions as we learn from a real life incident involving officers from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. Oh, Come on, let's do field sobriety. I've given so much to y'all. Don't stop, please. Santa Rosa County officers notice a Toyota racing down the road, going 73 in a 55 zone. Realizing the potential danger, they swiftly pull the vehicle over. The officers approach the car, ready to evaluate the situation. Here's the chilling part. The driver had her child in the car. Imagine the fear and anxiety that must have been coursing through her veins as she was subjected to a sobriety test right there on the roadside. Okay. Feet together, hands down by your side. I'm, I'm embarrassed, so okay. I can't. What's your... Turn around. Turn. As you can see in this footage, the driver was asked to perform a sobriety test. You can see the driver stumbling, unable to maintain balance, and struggling to follow instructions. These signs indicate impairment, greatly compromising their ability to safely operate a vehicle. Imagine being on a peaceful flight and suddenly witnessing a situation that catches everyone off guard. That's precisely what happened on a flight from North Texas to Dallas. Despite the chaos caused by this unruly passenger, the rest of the travelers on board remained calm and cooperative. As the passenger was led away in handcuffs, a round of applause erupted from those who witnessed the event. Thanks. I'll be back to talk to you in a second. The authorities wasted no time in taking the passenger into custody. However, it wasn't an easy task. The passenger resisted arrest, dropping to his knees, and even had to be wheeled away from the airport in a wheelchair. You won't believe what unfolded in Idaho Falls recently. It's a heart-stopping moment caught on camera that reminds us of the fantastic work our dedicated police officers do every day. On a rainy Tuesday, the rain poured and the water rapidly rose under the D Street underpass. Two Idaho Falls police officers sprang into action, risking their lives to save a woman and her young child trapped inside a van. We've got exclusive footage captured by the officers' body cameras. Let's have a look. Just come up here. Hey, Tara, we just had another car turn into the D Street. We're trying to distract children. It was a chaotic scene. The water was rising rapidly, and we knew we had to act fast. Our main concern was the well-being and safety of the woman and her child. There's no doubt that these officers thought on their feet, making split-second decisions to guarantee the safety of those in need. This footage began when police officers responded to a call at the Walgreen. The officers arrived to find a highly contentious situation between customers, quickly escalating out of control. 
I didn't do any battery. No, when you spit on people, that's did, battery. No, I did not. Listen, he verbally abused me. Well, that doesn't give you the right to spit on him. That's what you verbally abused me as soon as I got here. As a couple was checking out at Walgreens, the lady entered the store without wearing a mask. An employee politely asked her to put one on, which seemed to trigger a tirade of hatred. The lady who recorded cell phone and police body camera footage unleashed a stream of racist remarks. Fort Lauderdale police officers responded and arrested her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you, you okay, 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 okay. Can you apologize and to us? Bozanic later admitted that she was provoked, and in the heat of the moment, she said some really inappropriate things. We all know how emotions can sometimes get the best of us, right? Eventually, with the fear of being jailed and realizing her mistake, she remorsed for her words. She apologized and expressed a desire to move on from the incident. Despite being on the receiving end of Bozanik's hurtful remarks, they chose not to press charges against her, allowing her to leave the situation behind and move on with her life. In a world where karma always found a way, a twist of fate unfolded when this individual was unexpectedly pulled over in a small town by the Oconee County Sheriff's Office during a routine traffic stop. Little did he know that this ordinary moment would end his decades-long evasion. What's your, what's your last name? Sakim. Sakim, okay. All right, I'm going to have you go and step out the vehicle for me. She's going to come and get me. Deputies in Oconee County were performing routine registration checks on vehicles along East Monroe Highway and Hog Mountain Road on Tuesday afternoon when a Mazda came back as having no current registration or insurance. Sir, I do for my entire family. Okay. Do you know? I'm, I don't have a choice here, man. I'm telling you. That's, I, I told you job. I was not going to get in my car. I don't swear have to a you, choice. I wasn't going to get in you my car. You have a suspended license. You drive in a car without insurance. You've got that. When questioned, he told the deputy he was unsure why his license was suspended. The deputy called for backup and then took him into custody. Once he arrived at the Oconee County Jail, he was fingerprinted. Those prints were then run through the law enforcement database, which revealed his true identity. The suspect wanted for murder in Atlanta has finally been captured and apprehended, bringing an end to his nearly three-decade-long fugitive status. An incident occurred on June 28th when an officer observed a grey-coloured vehicle speeding and weaving through traffic on Mayfield Road. Okay, Vehicles on fire. Dispatch vehicles on fire. The officer quickly realized that the vehicle had struck a utility pole and had caught fire at Mayfield Road and Westchester intersection in Chester Township. Without hesitation, the officer bravely approached the scene and pulled the semi-conscious driver from the burning vehicle to ensure his safety. With the fire intensifying and rapidly spreading, additional police arrived at the scene and moved the driver further away from the vehicle. The driver, whose name was not released, was transported to the hospital in an undisclosed condition. In the small town of Pottsville, Arkansas, first-time parents found themselves in a terrifying situation. Desperate for help, they reached out to the Pottsville Police Department, where Officer Cody Hubbard answered their call. Is he breathing? It looks like he's holding his breath. Okay. okay. And I gave him... There we go. Arriving at the scene, Hubbard witnessed the infant struggling to breathe, leaving his parents and grandmother overwhelmed with panic and helplessness. Without hesitation, the young officer sprang into action, drawing upon his training and instincts. But that sounds good right there. That sounds yeah. really good. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear he's crying. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, no problem, no problem. With skill and determination, Officer Hubbard managed to get the baby breathing again, bringing relief and immense gratitude to the family. Joe Cronister, the baby's father, expressed his appreciation, acknowledging that Hubbard had saved their baby's life. The experience was overwhelming, turning a chaotic day into a moment of profound gratitude. Here is a gripping body camera footage of Officer Turner's heroic rescue that captures the heart-stopping moments as Officer Turner approaches the burning vehicle finding the injured man lying on the ground. Recording. EO's on duty. Water truck and vehicles and talk. Marine nuclear water truck and vehicles fully involved. Give me a hand, give me a The scene is set. 
flames engulf a mangled vehicle, smoke billowing into the night sky. Officer Turner receives a distress call seconds away from forever changing one man's life. Officer Kevin Turner acted swiftly, and there, lying on the ground, he finds the injured man, disoriented and unable to escape the vehicle's wreckage. The burning metal creates an unbearable heat, but Officer Turner remains laser-focused on the task. Without hesitation, he pulls the person across the ground to safety, with flames engulfing the car just before them. His quick thinking and remarkable bravery undoubtedly saved a life. Officer Turner's selflessness is a powerful reminder of the bravery and dedication displayed by law enforcement officers in the face of danger. In Galveston, Texas, a heated incident unfolded at a local Bank of America branch when a woman refused to comply with the face mask requirement. You're taking away okay. people's human rights. Okay. Oh, let's go now outside. he's, he's going to shoot me, people. He's no. going to shoot me for trying not to breathe. Cool. Come, cool. On, Come on, dude. Don't. Re oh, don't. Do Upon arrival, the bank manager informed the officers that Terry White had been asked to leave due to her refusal to wear a face mask, as mandated by the bank. Body camera footage captured the officers calmly approaching Miss White and requesting her to leave if she did not wish to wear a face mask. Despite their request, Miss White refused to comply and resisted the officers' attempts to escort her out. Not relaxed at all. Amidst the commotion, Miss White loudly accused the officers of police brutality, drawing the attention of other patrons at the bank. However, those present quickly refuted her claim, expressing support for the officers and emphasizing the importance of adhering to safety guidelines. A routine traffic stop unfolds in a quiet neighborhood on an ordinary day, revealing unexpected events. The driver, a young man named Alex, remains composed and cooperative as the officer requests his license and registration. I'm Officer Patino with the Orlando Police Department. There is some, uh, heavy driver license with you? Yeah, I was cool. Me? No, no. Oh. Are you the owner of the vehicle? No, my, no, sir. Alex explains that the car belongs to his girlfriend and offers the registration as proof. As the conversation progresses, Alex mentions his need to contact his probation officer, unknowingly arousing suspicion. The mention of probation triggers a different response from the officer. If you fight, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Turn around. In a sudden turn of events, Alex finds himself handcuffed and his car is subjected to a thorough search. The officer didn't know that this was no random traffic stop. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Four kilos? Uh, I wonder who's on there. I wonder who's on there. Officer Johnson decides to conduct a thorough search of the suspect's vehicle. With gloves on and a flashlight in hand, he meticulously inspects every nook and cranny. And that's when it happens. He unearths a secret compartment, hidden within the car, expertly designed to smuggle illegal substances. Time seems to stand still as Officer Johnson realizes the magnitude of his discovery. Indeed, what a surprising turn of events. This truly shows that you never know what lies beneath the surface. Get ready for an astonishing story from Atlanta that will leave you speechless. Stick around and let's dive right in. Which first man? Ali? Ali? Okay. Turn around. Yeah, you had some issues with your... Well, oh, I go... Yeah, can we do it on the... All right, I gotta, I gotta cuff you first. Our story revolves around a former top aide to the Atlanta mayor who was recently arrested on a terroristic threats warrant. Meet Ali Carter, the former top aide to the Atlanta mayor. When confronted by authorities about the warrant for his arrest, his response was anything but ordinary. You yeah, I know who I am? Yeah, Ali. No, do you know my job? No, sir. Okay, I'm gonna show you. It doesn't matter, we got to It does, man. I'm chief of staff to Andre Dixon. Okay, well, you still have a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? The response from the police officer was priceless. Despite the attempt to evade the situation by dropping a prestigious name, the officer maintained a calm demeanor and informed Carter that he still had a warrant for his arrest. That left everyone wondering, what are the authorities supposed to do in such circumstances? Remember, no one is above the law. Late one night, a strange call came to the local police department. Officers swiftly responded to their... Yeah. 
Do you have a registration for your bike? Uh, actually, no, I, I don't. I bought this bike yesterday. From where? Uh, so it's from, it's a private. As the officers approached, they noticed a man seated on the grass, his newly purchased motorcycle parked beside him. Concerned for his safety and the potential disruption to traffic, they approached him cautiously. They began to observe his behavior more closely, suspecting that he might be under the influence of something. Could you recite the alphabet starting with the letter E and finishing with the letter P without singing? L M N P U R X D U I Z. The officers decided to conduct field sobriety exercises to assess the man's level of impairment. It was during these routines that things took an unexpected turn. The man's demeanor suddenly shifted, displaying signs of agitation and nervousness. Get back close to you. You're getting closer. No, I want you to be. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Don't be a bitch, baby. All right, I'm gonna read these instructions to you, okay? Dude, right? Off, man. Dude. His actions became erratic and unpredictable, causing the officers to proceed with caution. The officers recognized the need for additional assistance and requested backup as the situation grew increasingly complex. They remained vigilant, ready to respond to any potential threats while ensuring the safety of the man and themselves. With the arrival of backup officers, the situation was brought under control. In the bustling Five Points neighborhood of Columbia, South Carolina, tensions ran high one evening as Sergeant Chad Walker, a police officer, found himself in a heated exchange while enforcing bar closing times due to COVID-19 restrictions. Actually, you did. Don't body cancel. Yeah. Try again. No, actually, I, I never. Try said that. again. I've never said that day in my life. Yes, no, no, actually, don't yes, sir. Yes, sir. You did. No, I didn't. Body cam footage recently released by the Columbia Police Department captured the intensity of the situation. A comment about Walker being color blind from a customer ignited a confrontation. A white patron stepped forward, expressing concern about Walker's treatment of people of color. At this moment, Walker pointed towards a black male and shockingly used a racial slur, claiming the man had directed it towards him. It's a racist word! It's not a racial word! I said he called me that word! Nobody was called that! can't use it! Okay, I can't do it! I am leading by example. Somebody calls me a stupid word? The utterance of the slur reverberated through the crowd, stirring immediate outrage and disbelief among those present. The black man vehemently denied ever uttering such words, but Walker persisted in arguing with the crowd. He questioned why he couldn't use the same slur if it had been directed at him. The tension escalated and another officer attempted to intervene while concerned onlookers urged everyone to de-escalate the situation and walk away. The Salt River is a place of serenity and adventure where visitors can soak in the scenic beauty while enjoying kayaking, fishing and even horseback riding. It's a true paradise. But guess what? Even in paradise, challenges can emerge. Their mission, to respond to some of the most daring rescue operations along the Salt River. And they do it with a unique set of tools. Their dedication and expertise come into play when navigating the crowded river, especially during peak season. The Salt River becomes a playground for thousands of tubers and kayakers, creating new challenges for the lake patrol. Amidst the bustling river, a critical water rescue unfolded, caught on body cam footage. A young girl found herself in a life-threatening situation. After a challenging eight-minute journey, the Lake Patrol members reached Carly and pulled her on board the airboat. Thanks to their efforts and Deputy Cecilini's life-saving chest compressions, Carly survived. Whitehall officers responded to a call regarding a man impersonating a police officer on Collingwood Avenue and East Broad Street. I'm not answering the question. You're avoiding the question. It's very simple. Are you a sworn police officer anywhere in the state that of Ohio commission. with any department? Not currently. Okay. That's right. not the question. That, well, well, I'm oh, not currently. Williams engaged in conversation with the officers, claiming to be an off-duty officer working a special duty detail for a company called Watchman, based in Cleveland. He further claimed that he worked for the Glenmont Police Department and was seeking extra income. However, succeeding investigations revealed discrepancies in Williams' statements. 
a law enforcement capacity displaying a badge that you have no right to have or a facsimile of a badge that's not even a real badge all right you're going to be charged now we're going to be nice about this okay and we're going to take you over and you can take your gun belt off williams was discovered wearing a counterfeit silver badge resembling the one the pickaway county sheriff's office used but that's not where the surprises end he also donned a yellow traffic vest with the word police and a fully equipped duty belt including a firearm the investigation also uncovered a loaded AR-15 style rifle, a ballistic tactical vest, a Pickaway County Sheriff's Office coat, and other law enforcement related items in his vehicle. Can you imagine stumbling upon someone who looks like a law enforcement officer, only to find out it's a fake? A county sheriff spotted a pickup truck driven by an off-duty lieutenant of the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office, exhibiting erratic driving behavior. Morrison promptly initiated a pursuit, capturing the events on his body cam. Step out of the vehicle! You're getting a taser. Back up. Taser right now if you don't get out. Out. Right now. Go to the front. Deputy Morrison requests Filippiak to take a field sobriety test. However, Filippiak resists, leading to a struggle as the officers attempt to physically remove him from the vehicle. Deputy Morrison issues a warning of potential taser deployment if Filippiak does not comply. What kind of deal do you want to make? A cop to a cop? That's a cop to a cop, why are you putting me in that situation? Why are you putting me in that situation? I didn't drink. Okay. Eventually, after a continued struggle, Filippiak is placed under arrest. But here's where things take a crazy turn. The officer's body camera captured a jaw-dropping moment. The footage shows a moment where Filippiak requests a cop-to-a-cop -cop deal, indicating his desire for a special arrangement. The officers face difficulties placing Filippiak in the back seat of the police cruiser, highlighting the challenges encountered during the arrest. New Mexico State Police stopped Jeremy Guthrie after observing his erratic driving in Albuquerque. What initially seemed like a standard case of driving under the influence quickly turned into something more sinister. You have a bunch of kids in the car. How many kids? You have one, two, three, four, five, six. Who are these kids to you? Uh, this is my friend. That's your friend? Yeah. How old's your friend? 18. That girl's not 18? Recently unearthed police cam footage reveals the unsettling scene as officers approached Guthrie's vehicle. Slurring his words and showing signs of intoxication, Guthrie claimed that the six children in his car were his friends. When questioned about the children in the car, Guthrie repeats that they are his friends. The officers couldn't believe what they had stumbled upon. It was an absolute nightmare scenario. Buttons down on your crotch. <laughs> well, I probably just forgot. Okay. Come back here. Come, come back here with me, Jeremy. Sit right here. I'll button my zipper. Right? Yeah, please button your However, the officers recognize the gravity of the situation and instruct Guthrie to exit the vehicle. While one officer conducts sobriety tests on Guthrie, another approaches the children to assess their well-being. Following the initial arrest for drunk driving, Guthrie faced even graver charges. Early one morning, the calm on Quail Drive was shattered when a fire broke out in an apartment complex putting the lives of its residents at severe risk. Yeah, they're, they're coming, they're coming. Body camera video captured the gripping moments as the three officers worked tirelessly to alert neighbors and evacuate the complex. However, their attention turned to an apartment on the second floor when they realized a 10-year-old boy, Kingston, and his mother, Keisha Sowles, were trapped inside. The situation became even more dire when it was discovered that the fire had blocked their escape route through the front door. Let's go, buddy, come on. Bust out the glass and let's go. We got you, buddy. We got you. We got you, buddy. It's okay. Right into us. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. In a race against time, Officer Corey Jones urged Keisha and Kingston to break the window. With bravery, he threw his baton, shattering the glass. Fear filled the air as Keisha and Kingston contemplated their escape. Finally, with trust in the officers below, Kingston jumped out of the window, skillfully caught by the three officers. The fire department swiftly set up a ladder to rescue Keisha, and Officer Jones ensured their comfort and protection in his car. In this next video, we have a disturbing incident that recently unfolded on a plane, leading to the apprehension of a 23-year-old woman. 
feel you need okay. to do to me, right? So I'm going to say what I have meant to say. No, you do not I'm stop. already going to get arrested. You're going to get arrested if you don't stand up and get off the I'm aircraft. I'm probably already going to get arrested. I really then honestly... stand up and get off the aircraft. That's all. Airport police were called to the scene after flight attendants encountered difficulties with a passenger who adamantly refused to wear a mask. Arguing with flight attendants and spitting at other passengers, the disruptive behavior escalated, leading to a series of concerning actions that distressed the airline's cabin crew and fellow passengers. Okay, have a seat. Watch your head. However, the woman adamantly refused to leave her seat. In response to her actions, the woman was eventually arrested by airport police. She now faces charges of resisting an officer, trespassing, and interference with aircraft operations. These charges reflect the seriousness of her disruptive behavior and disregard for the safety and well-being of her fellow passengers. In the footage, we witness the incredible bravery of the officers as they walk dangerously close to the recreational vehicle, unaware of the imminent danger. The calm before the storm quickly dissipates, and without warning, a loud shockwave fills the air as the vehicle explodes. The officers were just moments away from the unimaginable, demonstrating immense courage in the face of grave danger. The bombing happened early on the holiday morning before the dense streets were active. The officers were responding to a report of shots fired and came upon the scene to find the RV blaring an ominous recorded message that a bomb would detonate in 15 minutes. Following the explosion, Investigators meticulously combed through the wreckage. Afterward, a piece of DNA evidence was found at the scene. It helped investigators link the vehicle identification number recovered from the wreckage. Firstly, let's set the stage. Madeira is a picturesque suburban town in Ohio known for its tranquility and tight-knit community. However, in the early morning of Wednesday, something unimaginable occurred. Do you guys need any other units? No, nah, we're good now. There's no fire. The house is just pretty much collapsed on top of itself. Um, we're good with our fire units here. In a quiet neighborhood, just an ordinary night until an explosion shook the entire area. Multiple fire departments raced against time as they arrived at the scene, only to find a barely standing home engulfed in chaos. Okay. He's alive? He's alive. Shut up. Dead serious. Amongst the wreckage, a man was trapped under debris in the basement. As you may have heard, there was a massive explosion in a home right here in Madeira, Ohio, and it's got everyone talking. Now the thing is, this incident is being called possibly intentional. Just imagine the implications. What could have led? We have footage that unfolded in Escambia County, Florida, involving an intriguing incident at a gas station. What starts as a seemingly innocent situation takes an unexpected turn. What have I done wrong? What's your first name? Can I get answer, please? Well, I'm asking you for your name, because I gotta make sure you're not one for me where I gotta I'm make not, sure the not stolen. I had, um... In Escambia County, Florida, officers responded to a call about a woman sleeping in her car at a gas station. Little did they know it would lead to surprising discoveries. The woman explained she had fallen asleep while waiting for gas money from a friend, having been awake for 24 hours. The situation took a dramatic turn. Do you not realize you can't charge me for either? I don't know what anything. Uh, if I it stole was, it... It was in your bag. That it you're, wasn't in my bag. That you were looking for your ID in. Look, either I stole the car and I'm not responsible. During a thorough search of the car, the authorities stumbled upon multiple pipes associated with illegal substances. This discovery added another layer of complexity to an already mysterious situation. Moreover, they discovered that the suspect was driving a car that might have been reported stolen by an incarcerated owner, adding another layer of complexity to the situation. Determined to unravel the truth, the police removed the suspect from the vehicle, triggering a chain of events that increased the confusion and uncertainty. In this next video, we'll take a closer look at a recent incident involving the Columbus Division of Police where an officer's health was jeopardized during an arrest. Keep your hands on the wheel for me. I want you to face the front, all right? Keep your hands there. It's all right, we'll get your shoes in a minute. I want you to step out real quick, or I'm gonna take your hand, I'm gonna handcuff you. As the situation unfolded, 
A sergeant on the scene bravely approached the woman who was arrested and asked her about the substance. She disclosed that it was allegedly methamphetamine mixed with something else. The seriousness of the situation became apparent and swift action was required. You do it. Come here. One in, one in each nostril. Is it going in? Without hesitation, the sergeant and another officer sprang into action, opening their naloxone kits to administer the life-saving drug to their affected colleague. In the body camera footage, we witnessed the compassionate support provided by the officers involved. They help the affected officer out of his car and guide him to lie down while he experiences distressing symptoms. Thanks to the quick thinking and well-preparedness of his fellow officers, the situation didn't escalate into a tragedy. When the Limestone Fire Department responded to a fire in a wooded area, volunteer firefighter Scott Patton found himself in danger while trying to control the blaze. In this heart-stopping incident in northern Maine, we see the chilling moment when a propane tank exploded at the property. The force of the blast was so powerful that it left everyone stunned. Volunteer firefighter Scott Patton, who was bravely fighting the fire, suffered first and second degree burns to his face due to the explosion. Despite the intense pain, Patton managed to walk away from the fire, displaying remarkable strength and resilience. 